Are you a fan of Jamstack? If you are and haven't heard of Sourcebit yet, you're in the right place. I'm your host Andre, and I work as a Dev Evangelist at Kendico Content. And today I want to show you a story of a few young people. It's three guys from Brno, Berlin and Frankfurt, and three girls from Prague, Nuremberg and Warsaw. They know each other well, but the question is, how do we find the ideal couple? For people to form harmonic couples, they need to know as many people as possible and check their mutual compatibility. You see, this young man from Brno would be happiest with this girl from Slovakian mountains, while this German princess would prefer the guy from Hanover should she ever meet him. There are many apps that put people together, but what about Jamstack? As the popularity of Jamstack grew, a lot of new static site generators appeared and we have at least one for pretty much every platform. The most famous one being probably Gatsby, positioned uh, above Prague here on the map. So what's the problem? Do we need a Tinder for Jamstack? Before we start implementing a Jamstack site, we need to choose the platform and tools. If you're fans of JavaScript, you're likely going to choose Vue.js, React or Angular. If you're coming to Jamstack with a different background, your preference will probably be completely different, like Ruby, Go or .NET. So you choose the static site generator based on your previous experience. So far, so good. We can move on to the headless CMS. Now you need to store the content somewhere. Sure, you can use markdown files hosted on GitHub, but if you're not going to be the only one content editor till the end of the project's life, you need better content management. The situation gets a bit complicated here. If you don't have a personal preference, you'd have to make a choice based on comparison articles or experience of others until you hit a wall. The thing is, pretty much every headless CMS features a REST API or a GraphQL endpoints, but not every one of them has a source plugin for your selected static site generator. Source plugin is a package that expects a project ID or access key for the content in the headless CMS and it fetches all the content data for you. So it saves you a lot of time. Okay, so you just uh, choose a CMS that features the source plugin for your static site generator. Then you hit another wall. Your editors don't like uh, the new CMS. It may not be affordable for the scope of your project. And it may require you to host it yourself or something else that uh, does not really fit within the project criteria. In that case, Sourcebit comes to a rescue. Sourcebit behaves like a middleware between a CMS and a static site generators. The model is very similar to Zapier. It has three types of plugins. Source plugin that gets the data from your headless CMS project, normalizes them and provides them to Sourcebit. Transformation plugin, which is capable of transforming the data according to your application needs, and target plugin, which provides data to your chosen static site generator according to guidelines of that target platform. So how does it work in reality? Let's take a look at a short demo. This is Phantom. Uh, Phantom is an HTML5 app.net template uh, that I decided to use for this demo uh, as it's quite simple and allowed me to uh, show you uh, some of the blog posts that I have stored in my headless CMS. And it features one index page and every blog post has um, its own uh, its own dedicated page where uh, I can show the rest of each blog post. You see, this is just a preface for a blog post as the blog post is uh, published somewhere else. Now, all the data for this website are currently stored in a headless CMS called Sanity. You see that in Sanity here, uh, which is running on uh, my local host as well, uh, I have uh, three content uh, models and under post there are seven blog posts and this is the one that uh, that I showed you before. Now this whole website is built using Next.js. Let me open Visual Studio Code to show you the implementation. Now I don't want to get into Next specifics but I want to show you how Sourcebit plays with uh, Next. So there is a file in the root of the project called sourcebit.js and you see that there is a definition of two plugins. First definition shows what is the source plugin. 
You see, in my case, it's source bit source sanity because I'm using sanity headless CMS. And the plugin takes in as options access token and a project ID. So that's all the plugin needs to know to identify my content. The next plugin here is a target plugin, which is obviously source bit target next because I'm using Next.js. Uh, the options, I don't want to get into those uh, too much because this is something that you in normal situations don't have to solve at all. This is generated for you by a nice tutorial that I'm going to show you in a moment. So just so you know, the uh, configuration is here. Now, when we go into the implementation of pages, let's take a look at the slug.js uh, page, which defines uh, the detailed version of each blog post. You see here that there is the get static props function, which uh, is uh, executed before the page gets built. So uh, this is a standardized function of Next.js. And you see that in the implementation, I'm constructing the page path, which in my case is slash block slash the URL slug of each page. And then I'm calling source bit data client to get me data for this specific page at this path. So you see, this is the way how we can get data from source bit into the pages. And uh, then in the implementation of the page, you see in the HTML structure, I'm just using the elements of each page. So here it's a title image URL. These two values are different in case an image is stored in the CMS or the CMS holds just the URL to the, to the image. So that's the reason why there is uh, this condition. Uh, and there is a rich text field. You see, I created here a little resolver for the rich text because Sanity gives me a lot of arrays with all the blocks uh, that I that I need for my rich text. So there is a little resolver for, for that. Now, when we take a look at index page, index page is a little slightly different because I need to display all the blog posts on a single page. So in the get static props, I'm not actually using the path of the page, but I'm getting from the source bit data client all data and then just filtering through the pages, looking for pages that uh, have path starting with block and then returning all the blog posts that are displayed here as article element. So the website is now working. You see, if we go back to the home page, everything is displayed as it should be. And let's say that uh, we now decide to switch to a different headless CMS. I already have all the data in uh, headless CMS Kaneko content. So let me just uh, filter the blog posts. And you see it's seven content items. And here is the same blog post that I was showing you earlier. Now, what I want to show you is how SourceBit makes it easy for you to switch the CMSs. Now, to do that, I'm going to stop the site first. Make this a bit cleaner and run npm init source bit. Now this is going to take a moment, but once this finishes, it will present you a nice wizard that allows you to connect to a headless CMS of your choice that features the source plugin. And it will ask you a series of questions that define how you want to treat your content. So let's see, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. So here uh, source bit asks me, what is my source plugin or where I want to get the data from? I'm going to go with source bit source content. The next step is to define a transformation plugin. In my case, I don't need any transformation plugin. So I'm just going to the next step using uh, enter key. And then I need to define the target plugin. In my case, target plugin is for Next.js because my site is built using Next.js. So I'm going to select that using spacebar and go to uh, the next step. You see, the next step is actually the source plugin of the headless CMS content asking me what is the project ID of my uh, project on the headless CMS side. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the project ID and fill it here. The next question is what are the content language code names, which in my case, there is only one code name default. And the next question is which of these models should generate a page? So you see the source plugin actually downloaded all my uh, content models. And now I'm supposed to define 
which of these content models or which content items based on these content models will generate a page. In my case, it's definitely blog post content model and about me page. That's also uh, a content item that will generate a page. When I'm finished with uh, these selections, I go to next step using enter key. The next step is to configure each of those uh, pages. So you see for about me page, SourceBit asks me to define which field on the content model should be taken as the URL slug field. Now about me page, I know that there's gonna be just one content item for that page. And for that reason, the content model does not feature URL slug. So I'm just gonna define here that this page does not need a slug. So then I'm asked to define a path for the page if there's no slug. So in my case, it's gonna be slash about. The next step is to configure the blog post page. The blog post page, there can be many blog posts. You see, I had seven items already. So in that case, there is a field on the content model called slug, which holds the URL slug of uh, my future pages. So I'm just gonna choose that one. And then I need to choose a path for the page. Now, obviously the path cannot be just the slug, but in my case, it's gonna be slash blog slash slug. And that's all we need to do. Now there is one additional step we can make if, uh, if we need that. And that is if you have a content model that should be available to all components, all pages. Uh, that can be some kind of metadata or similar configuration things. I don't have that in my website. So I'm just gonna go through clicking enter. Now you see configuration was saved to sourcebit.js. So I don't have to touch that file. The wizard does it for me. The only thing you need to do if this is a new project, you need to go into next.config.js and put these three lines um, in that file because the target plugin is just like any other NPM plugin that you install into your Next.js site. It needs to be initialized. It needs to be installed in order to have the data uh, in Next. Now let's go back here and run the site. You see the website is now running. Let's go here and refresh the page. You see the website is running, but there are some errors. So something is not working. When we look at the dev tools, you see that here in the list, I still have my articles, but some things are missing. Here you see that the image is uh, broken. And if we go to a detailed page, of uh, one of these blog posts, you see that I also got an error that something is not a function. Now let's take a look at the implementation. Even though the data are normalized, there will always be some slight differences between the CMSs. First thing uh, being, if you name your fields on content models differently. If you do that, you will have to change that in your implementation as well. In my case, there is a difference in image URL because in uh, content, the field has a code name image underscore URL, not image capital URL. So this is the first thing that I need to fix. And I need to fix it on both the blog page and the index page. So you see some of the blog posts are already displayed correctly. The rest of the blog posts have image stored in the headless CMS. And in case of content, the URL is actually not in a sub property called URL, but is already provided in the image directly. So uh, I'm just gonna fix this here and also on the blog post detailed page where we're also looking just for page.image. And let's see if that started to work. Okay, so you see that this blog post is already working. On the detailed page, we still have an error that page teaser map is not a function. The reason for that is that content handles the rich text field a little bit differently than sanity. Sanity requires this resolver here, but in case of content, we're already getting the content in uh, the p tags for paragraph. So 
what I can do is just comment this and put here a new rich text. And because this is already an HTML, I'm going to put it into div as an inner HTML. So let's take a look at the blog post. You see right now is displayed correctly. The last thing I need to change here on the main page is the date here. You see that it's currently outputting uh, NAN. The reason for that is the name of this property is not published at, but only published. So when I save that, you should see this is already working. So what are the benefits of using SourceBit? First of all, you're not limited by your CMS. If it's integrated with SourceBit, you can use any platform that has the target integration. You're also not limited by your static site generator, and you can switch to a different one if it offers better features. Apart from adapting to specifics of the new tool, the data will be the same and provided by SourceBit. It's also possible to fetch data from multiple sources into SourceBit and consume it as one data source within the static site implementation. So I hope you like this video. If you guys want to try out content with SourceBit, feel free to use this QR code, which will give you three months of trial instead of one. And if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to get in touch uh, with me on Twitter. I'll be happy to answer them. So. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.